We are now going to talk about the concession or compromise in respect of a debt, which is discussed in section 19 and paragraph 12a. Now, paragraph 12a you studied when you did capital gains tax. That studied the capital gains tax side of this problem that we'll encounter, but section 19 does the recoupment or the income tax side of it. Now, basically, guys, what this section relates to is a situation where you used a debt to finance an amount which resulted in some sort of tax deduction. So I go out and I incur debt and then I can claim a deduction. So for example, I take out a, a loan of the bank to buy trading stock, so I claim a trading stock deduction. Or I take out a loan to pay salary, so I claim a salary deduction. Or I take out a loan, so I buy a capital asset and then I can claim capital allowances. So what I want you to understand is I got a loan some for something and that's something I purchased using the money that I owe to someone else, I can claim a deduction for. Now what will happen is this section applies to that debt is written off. So the basic idea here is that if SARS allows you to claim a tax deduction because you incurred expenditure, but you don't have to pay the debt anymore, SARS wants to recoup the amount that they allowed as a claim. So, if I give you an example, a taxpayer purchases a stock on credit for 100,000 rands and claims section 11A deduction. So remember it like this, you'll go purchases 100,000 rands. Now, important here, it was purchased on credit, so it means I need to still pay for it. But then say the credit then reduces the debt to 80,000 rands. So I only have to pay 80,000 rands, 20,000 rands I've written off for me, so they've given me a discount for whatever reason the case might be. So what's the issue here? I've claimed 100,000 rands as a deduction for tax, but I only paid 80,000 rands. SARS doesn't want that. So what SARS will say is will say section 19, that 20,000 rands, which is a debt benefit that we received, that amount will be added back, like in that fashion. Now these in definitions you've already studied in paragraph 12a, they're the same in section 19, but let's quickly talk about it. You get a concession and a debt benefit. And I want you to just compare this to the next slide, because what I do here is I show you a concession, which is this, will result in a debt benefit, which is discussed here. Okay, so the two slides complement each other. So concession or compromise, what is a concession or compromise? So when, when do we apply this? It's basically if a creditor writes off your debt. Or... If the debt is written off by converting it into shares in the debtor company. So for example, let's say you buy or I buy something from you on credit. So I owe you money. But now I say to you, listen, I'm not going to pay you that, but I'm going to give you shares in my company. Okay, that is also a concession. Because what have I done? I've actually written off the debt and replaced it with equity. Now what is the value of that? That's basically what this section tells us. Whatever the value is, if they write off the creditor writes of 10 rands, then that is the amount of the concession at date. And what happens if they issue shares? Okay, so if they issue shares, if I did not have an interest in the company before, so I say to you, remember, you, uh, I bought something from you, I owe you money, so I give you shares instead. If you didn't have interest before, what is the amount that you've written off? Whatever the market value is of the shares issued. If you did have an interest before, so you did have shares in my company before. We'll say, what is the market value of your shares before? So let's say before I, ga I gave you the new shares, you were at 10,000. What is the market value of the shares after 12,000? So how much did you actually get? 2,000. That is then the value. And then just over here, like I've explained also, guys, if I owe the ba bank 100 rands and the bank says, um, if I pay in 60 rands, they'll write off the loan. So I owe them 100 rands, but I only have to pay 60 rands. That's 40 rands is then a debt benefit. Right, so that's what it just shows you here. Now, guys, these are the sections that apply. We will apply paragraph 12a if there is an asset, whether it's a depreciable or a non-depreciable. Well, what I want you to see is if it's a depreciable asset, an allowance asset, right, that's the same one as you see over here. So I want you to see if we call this number A or letter A, these two are the same. So you apply paragraph 12A, the capital gains tax side to any assets. And section 19, you apply to the recoupment side, trading stock side, and any other expense that was incurred. 
Now, if it is for trading stock, discussed in section 19.3, it works as follows. If the stock is still on hand, you decrease the amount of the cost and recoup that as a deduction under section 19.3. So if they say, for example, you bought 100,000 rands of stock, so you would have claimed 100,000 rands deduction, but now they say they gave you a 30,000 rands they wrote off, section 19 will be add that 30,000 rands back. Right, at the end of the year, your closing stock that was not sold will be worth 100,000 minus 30,000. So basically reduce the cost of the stock. If the stock is not on hand, so I bought stock on credit, I sold it already, and now they give me the right of the loan, then that full amount is just included in my gross income. So whether or not the stock's on hand, or if it's been sold, you basically include the amount in your gross income. Other expenses, so I take out a loan to pay salaries, so I claim a salaries deduction for 500,000 rands, the bank writes all of that 500,000 rands, I just add the amount back, it's a recoupment. And then when it comes to assets, as seen in paragraph 12a, if it is a not an allowance asset, we only apply paragraph 12a, and what we do is we reduce the base cost. This is if the asset is still on hand when the debt is reduced. So we recalculate the base cost and we reduce it. If the asset has already been sold, we basically go back and say, okay, we recalculate the base cost, what it would have been in the year it was sold, and then reperform the capital gain calculation. And the difference between what the capital gain is now versus what it was then is what amount we have to pay in. An allowance asset, if the asset is still on hand, you first reduce the base cost, and any excess amount is recouped. So let me explain to you, for example, X Limited buys machine for a million rands on credit. Year two, the million rands is written off. Okay, so I'm just trying to explain to you it's written off, it's um, the person sells it. Okay, so what happens in year two is the following. You will calculate what is the base cost of this asset. And what is the base cost of this asset? It's the cost of a million less section 12c which was year one and year two year one 40 percent year two 20 percent so 400,000 200,000 has been deducted okay so this sorry 400,000 rands is my base cost at the time when we received the debt what you then do if they write off that full million rands as you will first write off this base cost, you will take 400,000 rands and you'll write it off. So the new base cost, that's a new base cost. And the remaining 600,000 is the recoupment. That's what it explains here. Now, if the asset was already sold when they wrote it off, what you'll do is you will recalculate again the capital gain recoupment based on this principle. So what I want you to understand is if the asset has not been sold, the new base cost nil in this case will be nil. So if I sell it tomorrow for 500,000 rands, proceeds will be 500,000 and the base cost will be nil. Now already I know what you're saying to me. How can you say it's 500,000 rands proceeds when we have a recoupment day of 600,000? What you'll see, and you'll also see when you look at your examples on this, this is a bit of a tricky section because the section is still fairly new. And this has not all been plus out. This 600,000 over here, which you recover through section 19, does not get deducted from the proceeds amount because it's not considered a recoupment that you received on the proceeds of an asset. It's considered the recoupment that you received in terms of section 19 on the date reduction. Okay, so it does not affect that calculation. Okay, but you'll see in the example. And then guys, when does it not apply? Section 19.8, please do work through it. One of the most important ones I just want you to see here is, if someone, so I buy something from you on credit, so I owe you money. If you write it off as a donation, and it's a proper donation, and, we sh and there was donations tax payable on it, then this section doesn't have to, have to apply. Why? Because there's already some form of tax being paid on a donations tax. So they've indicated that on the question, they will tell you whether or not this is a commercial decision. If it's a commercial decision, it's not a donation. So then section 19 in paragraph 12a will apply. But if it's a donation, donations tax is payable, and this section will not apply. 
And that is it for concession and compromises of date.